When I ride my bike for transport, I want it to be as faff free as possible. But there's so many products out there for cyclists. What do you really need? In this video, I'm gonna tell you what my five favorite city cycling essentials are. The reason they're my favorites? Because they keep the faff to a minimum and make cycling just easy. Here in Bristol, cycling is the best way to get around. I regret every time I get on the bus because it takes forever due to congestion. I rely on cycling as my main form of transport, which is a bit different than when I lived in London where I combined buses and trains and tubes with my bike. Um, and because it's my main form of transport, I find myself wearing normal clothes on the bike more often. Which brings me to item number one. Item number one is inside this little pouch. It is the people's poncho. And uh, because it rains a lot here in Bristol, but more so because the weather is very changeable here. One minute it can be sunny, the next minute it could be pouring down rain. So I can pack this little guy into my bag and take it with me just in case it starts raining unexpectedly or if it's forecasted to rain. Um, the great thing about this poncho is that it will fit on top of whatever I'm wearing. So my winter jackets, it goes on top of my summer jackets, no jackets. So it's a year round item that just works for me. Some of the reasons that I think this poncho in particular is quite good is the details that they have. So there's reflectives around the edges of the cape and along the back side of the cape. Uh, there's a little pocket in the front. Um, as well, there's a waistband, which is really important feature because if it's windy, uh, even just when you're riding your bike, you cinch the um, waist strap and it stops the cape from flapping out behind you too much. Um, and the other feature is that it keeps your legs dry, which is why I wanted a poncho. So when you're cycling in the rain, if even if you have a good rain jacket, your legs are gonna get wet. Um, with a poncho, you put the poncho over top of your handlebars and it keeps your legs dry. Um, so when you're cycling in normal clothes and arriving somewhere and you can't change, you can arrive dry. I was a bag girl before I started riding bikes, so now I think I've sort of transferred my love of bags into bike bags, <laughs> and why not? When you ride around the city, you've gotta carry things with you. If you're going shopping, you're gonna end up with stuff to bring home. I'm happy to use my panniers if I'm going for a big grocery shop. They are functional and they have a large capacity. But I'm riding around town or meeting friends or going to work, I just want a bag that doesn't scream bike bag. Um, so I have a couple that fit into that category. Three I'm gonna share with you today, my three favorites. Um, one is the small, um, Fuga cargo bag, and I do not believe you can get this exact one anymore. Um, it's made by a woman in Spain uh, who makes all kinds of different bags, and she added these straps on the back of this one, so I have Velcro strips. It, it came with buckles, tight leather ones, but I found them faffy, so I used Velcro. Um, so I just slipped them up through there onto my handlebars. It's a handlebar bag. So I ride with this uh, on my road bike, gravel bike, mountain bike, and my commuter, of course. So I love this bag and I love it off the bike. And although it looks little, it uh, stores more than you would think. Uh, I've put a, an entire uh, change of outfit into this bag, no problem um, going to work one day. So <laughs> small but mighty, it's a great bag. The next two bags are made by a company uh, called Frost & Seckers. They're a small company here in the UK and they are um, trying to make a great bag that is yeah, functional, looks great both on and off the bike. So when they contacted me, um, of course I had to know more and give it a try. But the secret thing about, not the secret thing, <laughs> the great thing about their bag is the faff free ease at which you put it, attach it to your bike and take it off. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, and you, there's a full review actually of that as well I've done in the past. So this is their newer bag, which is smaller uh, than the previous one. Um, so as you can see, smart looking bag. Um, and then it's all about this, the quick release system. So this hooks into a hook that you attach to your saddle and it's so it sits behind you um, on the back of your saddle when you ride and you literally just slot that in, it'll click. And then if you want stabilization of it, they have the ability there to allow you to um, wrap that around your seat post to stabilize the back. This is the original one and as you can see, it's slightly bigger. It's a more squidgy bag. The other one is more rigid. Um, so they're great. They're, they both hold a fair amount. This one will be great uh, overnighting. Um, they both be great for Odax rides. And I've got my, my little teddy pin there. Um, but great bags, really functional. They look great on and off the bike. Item number three. 
lights. In the UK, I am cycling home in the dark for about four to five months of the year. So having working lights is really important for safety and just for being legal on the road. Um, my first few years of cycling, I went through a set of lights every winter and I had to carry two sets of lights, the set I was using on my bike and a backup set in case I should forget to turn the light off and drain it while the bike was parked, forget to charge it and it run out halfway home, um, or should it just break? So I always had two sets of lights with me when I rode. That's changed. So there was a Kickstarter called, uh, by a company called Relight and they were using lights that were battery free uh, based on magnetic power from the rotation of your wheel. Um, so I joined that Kickstarter, received the lights. Um, I've done a review on that, I'll link below. Fantastic light, two problems. They were made for right hand side drive uh, countries. So the light I have on the front is mounted upside down so I can mount it on the correct side of the bike. That's fine, that works. The rear light, um, however, because I have a rack on my commuter bike, the rack blocked the light due to the way it was mounted to the rear uh, stays. So unfortunately, it didn't solve my problem completely. Love the front light, still use it today. Fantastic, it's a bright flashing light. It's great for daytime running lights even. They had seen my review of their light and they contacted me uh, because they made a new light. So the new one fixed all the problems I had with the original. The light's mounted centrally, so I have the rear on the center of my back rack and I had the front light on the center of a uh, headset. So mounting position, it didn't matter if it's left or right hand side countries, it works anywhere. And when you come to a stop, they have enough charge in them. So while you're sitting at a stoplight, there's still lights, they start blinking at that point. They use the rim of your wheel. So you have to have an aluminum wheel to get the magnetic power. And so you never have to charge them. You have to never turn them on and off. They're just always there. You hop on your bike and you go. And that's why I love them. I never think about them. So yeah, I just leave them on my bike year round basically now. And if I end up out late in the summer, um, I don't have to worry about it because they're attached to my bike and they just work. Item number four. So what's our all our worst fear? Getting a puncture in the cold, wet, dark, rainy nights of winter. Um, or even in the rainy days of summer or at all. You just want to get home. You don't want punctures. So this is the um, inserts by Tennis that I've been using the past year. And they look like this. So you can see. And what this is all about is, so it's a foam insert. It goes inside your tire and then your inner tube goes inside the insert. And it protects things that manage to breach your tire, but stop them. It stops them from getting to your inner tube and puncturing it. And should the worst happen, if you do get a puncture, you can ride flat with these because this edging protects your rim. I love these for, for peace of mind. I don't have to carry extra inner tubes. I don't have to carry a pump. I don't have to carry all that kit levers and everything. Um, because if the worst should happen, I should get a puncture, I can ride home on a flat with these. I've used them so far in a gravel bike, in my commuter road bike, and next I'm now inserting a different size version of that into my road bike. So I'll have a full review after I've experienced it on my road bike for a few months. So stay tuned for that. And that brings me to the last thing, theft protection. So, and I say protection because there's no such thing as theft proofing your bike. For worst case scenario, I have insurance through my contents insurance. And then otherwise I have a set of locks that I use for various different circumstances. Um, they're all by light lock, which I was another Kickstarter campaign. Um, I bought this lock from, it gave me the lightest gold rated lock I could find. And uh, as far as gold rated lightness and money wise, it was good value for me. Um, so use these across Canada and then also because they could daisy chain together so Nathan and I could join both our locks together and lock the bike in one go if we wanted. Um, so use those and then they've since come out with a silver lock and it's wearable. So I also have this one and I'll tell you how I use them differently. Um, but this one you can do that if you can and then you can put it on your waist uh, like that. Usually I carry it in my bag, but it's nice to have that option. And the silver one I use when I'm nipping out down to the shops really quickly and just the bike's gonna be outside for five, 10 minutes. Or if I'm parking it somewhere, say I'm having a coffee with somebody and I know I'm parking it, my bike will be in sight um, 
when I'm parking it. So the, the silver, I probably will use the silver for tours and things as well in the future because I don't usually leave my bike unattended on tours. You know, I love touring, I love road cycling, and now cycling is my main form of transport. And that does come with different um, challenges than the other types of cycling. And these are the items I used to make it fat free, easy, um, and convenient for me. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll link to any of the reviews I have of these things done already uh, below and stay tuned for the uh, Tannis review coming up in the future. Thanks for watching. Until the next video.